Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ again. Thank you for joining us for Explain this week and uh, in this episode. Um, today we have the question and answer session. We did it some time back and uh, our good friend is here to take us through that. Let me ha allow her to introduce herself as we start. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Faith Koetch and mm -hmm. I'm here with questions hoping to get answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. you don't know everything. Yes, I do. Let's, let's make that point clear from the beginning. Okay. But we will see what the Word of God says about the things that we'll discuss. Okay. Today we are tackling a very, very important topic in the church. And what is that topic? Baptism. Baptism. Yes, yes. and um, I know, we know, we've heard a lot about the word baptism, but we will see what the Bible talks about that specific thing. And we'll see how that applies to our lives and how that can help us to be closer to God. Yes. I think uh, before we even get further, can you tell our audience what you do? Um, I'm a student mm -hmm. at Catholic University mm -hmm. of Eastern Africa, mm -hmm. and I'm doing computer science. Ah, computer yes. science. Yes. Which year are you? I just finished my first year. And how is it? How is computer science? It's not as challenging. It's it's okay. I like it. I enjoy it. Has it has a lot of maths, yeah, programming, maths language. And, mm -hmm. Yes. We so after you finish, what will you become? a uh, software developer software developer yeah. so making apps yeah apps, and websites. systems exactly ah yeah good and that's what you want to do yes you are not forced by your parents no okay don't. yeah <laughs> good and that's very important sometimes parents want to live their lives through their children so if they failed to get to something to become a pilot they want their child to become a pilot. please don't do that to your children okay so about baptism uh, where do we start um what is baptism? What is baptism? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the word comes from uh, Greek, the Greek language. Um, the Greek language is a language that was spoken by the ancient Greeks. And Greece is still there. There's a country called Greece today. So the language is still alive and may not be the same that was used in the Bible times. But that is the same. Those are the same people that gave us the language that the New Testament was written in. So baptism, that root word for that word baptism, from the greek itself if i can remember from my bible, my bible school if you take something like a bread uh, you put bread inside tea and then it's it tastes nice that yeah, one yes. so that, that act of putting the bread inside the tea that is to it's baptize true. the bread okay <laughs> so that also has a connotation of something that we we should do in spiritual sense so that's what we want to look at because the word can be used it's, it's not a spiritual word by the way some people think Baptism is a spiritual word. You only use it for spiritual things. In ancient Greek, baptism or whatever root word that was used that time could be used for anything that when you put immerse something in water, you are baptizing it. Okay. Yeah. But it has transformed into the English. That's why we have the word baptism, Baptist, all the forms that have come out of that, that root word. Mm -hmm. um, even in Kiswahili, baptism is... Baptism. You can hear that rootness is there bap, bap, yes. bap. okay so baptism then we have it in the bible and it's not just a word that means to dip something into water mass something into water it has a spiritual meaning as well and that's what we want to look at today um maybe the best way to do it is to look at a few verses from the bible and see what they tell us about baptism yes i think the first verse to look at if we go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 15, you can read for us and see what it says. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew three. chapter 3, verse mm -hmm. 13 to 15. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. Okay, so there was a person called John the Baptist. Actually, he was a cousin of Jesus. Okay. John the Baptist comes into the scene. He's preaching that people need to repent, stop doing evil things, come back to God. And because people are repenting, he wanted to people to show it openly that they have done that kind of thing. Mm. So John required that, unlike, unlike many other prophets like, that were before him, John required that if you come to him, you repent of your sins, you have to pub pub publicly declare that you, you've repented. And that's now what he did to those people by asking them to come into the water, River Jordan, be dipped into the water, and then come out of that water. That was a public statement that I have repented. I was a sinner. I recovered that I've done bad things. I say I'm sorry for those things. Now I am coming out with a clear conscience and wanting to serve God from that. That's John the Baptist. 
So that's where the story picks up. I repeat again, verse, uh, repeat verse 13. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. Yeah, so John is John is baptizing and then Jesus is also coming to be baptized. baptized. Remember we said, those people who need to be baptized were? Sinners. Sinners. From the way you know Jesus, was he a sinner? Yes. Okay, now let's continue verse 14. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the only one who needs to be baptized. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. He said, so why are you coming to me? Now you can understand John. Because yeah. compared to Jesus, John is feeling, well, hey, I'm the one who should be baptized by you because I'm more, I can see my sinfulness when you are standing before me. So I'm telling Jesus, no, you've come to the wrong person. Now me, I'm baptizing people who are sinners for real, not like you. And then he says, why are you coming to me? It's come you or something. Then verse 15. But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Yes. Meaning then that actually, Jesus did not need to be baptized. But you see, for him, if it's a requirement of God, he does it even if he doesn't need to, as an individual, doesn't need it. But if God requires it from me, then I'll have to do it. I go my, I go the extra mile to fulfill all that God wants from me. So that is the kind of attitude we need to have from the beginning about, about baptism. It is a requirement of God. We may think it's not important, but it's because God has required it that you will do it. That's how Jesus, and if Jesus is our example, you can see from him. He didn't need to be baptized, but he's the one who, who went even to John. It's not John who looked for him. So even the people, if you're watching us and you've not been baptized, you know the pastor to look for you, you need to look for the pastor concerning that issue itself. So that's one of the very key important things that you need to play before you go to, to other verses. And then the famous verse in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. People know this one because of missions, but let's look at the baptism aspect of this verse today. Mm-hmm. It says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay. So this is Jesus. He's speaking to his disciples and he's telling them, this is after he resurrected, so he's going to heaven and he's telling his disciples, now, my disciples, I'm going to heaven, but I'm leaving you in charge. And from this moment on, I want you to go and make disciples of all nations. Make students for me from among the people of the world. So that was the what people call the Great Commission. Yeah. And how do we make disciples? So the how, the how part of how to make disciples, the first part is baptizing them. And baptize them in the name of the? The Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Notice also it doesn't say the names of? So they are one. God is one. Remember from our other discussion? (laughs) So the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Because you're being baptized into this God who is one and in Trinity and the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are working together in your salvation plan. So we go out, make disciples for Christ. Those who accept, we baptize them. So it's the mandate of the ones because if you go to a tribe, they've never known anything about baptism. They have to be told. So you'll tell them, This is what God says. Uh, He sent Jesus. Your sins can be forgiven. You can have eternal life. But you, for you to start, you have to be to repent and then be baptized and then now follow the teachings of Christ. That's what it goes on to say. And teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. So if I baptize someone who has believed and teach them to obey everything Christ has commanded, I have made disciples for Christ. So baptism is a very crucial part, so that we don't think. You can go to teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you without baptizing them. Because we may not understand fully why baptism, but we need to do it just because God requires from us that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. okay. So, as we mentioned also, baptism is being immersed in water. And some people may think it's about removing dirt from your body, removing chafu from, you know, we are dirty, so removing the chaff. And verse, uh, verse 21 of First Peter chapter 3, that says something about that. Okay, First Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Mm-hmm. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. Mm-hmm. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, so the water in baptism, because you need water to baptize somebody, is a symbol 
But it's not just a symbol for removing that from the body, because water we use water to wash ourselves to bath. But that's not the main thing for, but for the symbol of that water. It is actually the pledge of a clear conscience to God. So I have been washed and cleansed by that water, but what is being washed actually is the spiritual part of me. And that should reflect in saying, I have committed my conscience to God. I want to live with a clear conscience. Clear conscience means I have nothing pending, nothing, uh, an unrepented sin, an, unrepent, an unforgiven, I have not, forgi- not, I've not refused to forgive somebody. That's the kind of clear conscience. It involves many other things. So then the symbol, the waters when used as a symbol in baptism, it is for, for us to know it is a symbol of pledging a clear conscience to God. If I pledge a clear conscience to God, I've, ref- I've been baptized and that's what that baptism should mean to me as a person. Hopefully it may make sense. Mm. Okay. Yes. All right. And then one day, Peter is preaching and he's preached to so many people. And that's, this is on the, on the day of Pentecost. After preaching, the people listen and they are, they've gotten to the point they are saying, Peter, you're saying the truth. You're saying the right things. And then what should we do now? What should we do after you preach so nicely and done all those things? So in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter replied to them. You can start. You can read for us that. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So you see, people are um, you you've preached to the people, they've heard the message, and then they're asking you, now what do we do with what you told us? We, we, need, we feel we need to do something. So Peter is telling them, the first thing you need to do is to? To repent. Repent. The first, first, the first thing, thing, just repent. Mean. Repent means recognize your sinfulness and stop doing going that direction uh, somebody was saying actually pent is you know like penthouse top house yeah yes go to the top repent go to again to the return to the top that kind of thing in your relationship with god so repent and then after you're repenting you are baptized. baptized this after john the baptist has died jesus has gone to heaven but the baptist did didn't stop with john the baptist we see it now being done by the disciple of Jesus Christ. Be baptized, every one of you. So this is, you can't do it on behalf of somebody else. <laughs> you can't say now, I want to be baptized for my long dead grandfather. No. You are baptized for you. You are the one who is declaring that I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And that baptism has to happen in the name of Jesus Christ, not in any other name. Basically, you're saying the authority under which we are doing this act is the authority of Jesus Christ. If I come with a letter that has Uhuru Kenyatta on it, President Uhuru Kenyatta, I'm coming with it in the name of that person. So that's, that's basically what it means in the name of Jesus Christ. And that will bring about the forgiveness of your sins. So repenting and being baptized brings about forgiveness of your sins. And as human beings, we can think, yeah, this baptism thing, I, I hate water. I'm water, what is they called? Hydrophobic. Um, uh, I, I don't like cold water, so you, some people have postponed being baptized because of that. But we need to know what is at stake here, it's the forgiveness of our sins. And the attitude we show towards baptism should reflect that same attitude that was in Christ. No need to be baptized, but he went the extra mile to be baptized, so that he can fulfill all righteousness, all things that God wants. And then, notice, so you repent, baptized, you're forgiven of your sins, and then what happens, that last line? You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So the gift of the Holy Spirit comes in that sequence. And then if you... Actually, let's read Acts 19, verse 5 to 6, so that we also see the, this in action. Okay. Mm-hmm. It says, On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Yes. So, Paul is preaching somewhere. People had, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the language. This is what Peter had said. Yeah. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So you can see how the Bible is one. Mm-hmm. Peter said something and we can see Paul doing it. Awesome. Now, the... Um, Another verse that can help us to understand, Mark 16, 16, we can read it. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Yes. So whoever believes, 
is baptized and you will be saved. So salvation is linked to baptism. So a salvation that does not include baptism is questionable. We'll get to that point. But the salvation that does not have a baptism is questionable. So, and this is Jesus saying, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. You could have said whoever believes will be saved. But he adds baptized. I think the important thing about, about, about baptism is this. I've said I'm um, changing my life. I want to follow Jesus Christ. I want to make a statement to those people around me. The public thing I can do that will make a statement is to get baptized. So when I'm baptized, I'm telling the world, from now on, I have died to myself and I'm coming up to the water as a new creature who is formed in the image of Christ, who wants to live for Christ. I let Christ live through me. I think that's what uh, first verse there says. Galatians 3 verse 26 to 27. In Galatians, oh, yeah. yes. mm -hmm. it says, so in Christ Jesus, you, you are all baptized. You are all baptized children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself in, with Christ. Okay. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you are baptized. So he's talking to people. These are the church in Galatia. Yeah. So these are he's talking to fellow believers. He's reminding them actually when you are baptized into Christ, it's like you put on Jesus. So now that when people look at you, they should see you removed yourself and you put on Jesus. So they should see Jesus when they look at you. Yeah. And then um, in in Romans chapter 6 verse 3, it speaks about that death that we are talking about. So read it for us. Romans chapter 3 verse chapter, chapter 6 verse 3. Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus are baptized into his death? Okay. So uh, uh, this is a, a question about uh, that should not require you to ask it. <laughs> a rhetoric question. Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ were baptized into his? his death. Yeah. So basically, Christ died, we were not there. But when we are baptized, it's like we are participating in his death. So you have, whatever the meaning of that death or the effect of that death was supposed to, what it was supposed to do for us, we are being part of it by baptism. That's just that simple thing of being put in water. He's basically saying, Christ died, I recognize that fact, and I want what that death means to me. That mean, the death means that God has forgiven me my sins. So that's the, how important uh, baptism is. And then verse, John chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Okay. <laughs> um, there are some people who think, yeah, you know, must I be baptized to go to heaven? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What does that verse say? It says no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water in the spirit. Okay. Born of the water, there are some people will discuss and say, you know, born of water does not necessarily mean baptism. But then what does it mean? Because if you're also not born of the water, how can we be born of water apart from baptism? Is there another form of that? Mm. So this basically is baptism. So unless you're baptized of water, and baptized, baptized in the spirit, because that's what the baptism, another baptism we'll talk another day then truly Jesus is saying you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Uh, some people say, you know, that there was a thief on the cross. The thief on the cross did not, did not was not baptized. Until he got saved on the cross. He died. Jesus told him, today you'll be with me in paradise. So how does that reconcile with the fact that this Jesus is saying the same thing, unless you are born of water and the spirit, there's no, there's no heaven for you. I think the death of Christ marks the end of a very important era. That is the old covenant God had with people. So everyone who who died before Christ, their state is different. How the God will deal with them is different from the way he deals with those of us who, die, who are living after Christ died, this side of Christ's death and resurrection. So the thief on the cross, which side is he? Before. Before. Yeah. So for him and everyone else to Abel, the first person to die, Everyone in that sense, we don't know. And we, because we are not part of that, we cannot exactly tell how 
God will deal with them concerning issues come about baptism, all those other things. Yeah. But for us who have heard the gospel, and we know it's an important thing, it's a very important thing that we need to take serious, then we have to do what Christ has said. We can't use their time to be our excuse at this moment. And then uh, some people also say, you know, there are people, if you go to the desert and you and you preach to people and they get saved, there's no water. What do you do? <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Ah, yeah. Sometimes, in that state, some a symbolic way of doing it can be just take a cup of water and then pour it on their head, a small amount to reflect, to, to just help them understand that this is a new, a new life that you're getting into. So the symbolic fact of that should not be lost. Of baptism because of whether there's water or no water we think of desert imagine also you're in in iceland you can't but if you baptize somebody they'll freeze and die yeah. so <laughs> you don't baptize them you also look for a way of still doing the symbolic act of baptism but without losing without um, endangering the life of those people that you're doing it with i'm uh, using an excuse for you to avoid it so what you have is what you use but most of the time, the people who are in those situations are not the ones who are asking this question. True. It is people who have a lot of water, swimming pools, and rivers, and oceans, and they are the ones who ask this question. Meaning that actually the issue is not the water. The issue is the attitude of somebody from the heart, and what they think about baptism. So, it's a, um, an, attitude, it's an attitude and motive thing that should be dealt with in your heart. So, if you've been a believer for a long time, you believe Jesus Christ is Lord, and you repented you've done all that is required but you've not been baptized just go into your heart and ask yourself what is it that is holding me from being baptized is it my pride sometimes i think this is what happens people imagine if for example your mom has been saved for a long time and then you thought she was baptized but she has never been baptized and then now she needs to be baptized but she doesn't want to do it because she will look it will look off yeah, yeah. but also brings us to the point where are you able to like Jesus said, are you ashamed of me before people? And if you are, then you'll also be ashamed of you before the Father. Yeah. So it should be, uh, I should fear God more than people, people and then do the right thing before God. So if you are in that si- situation as well, I know sometimes you may have your church members, you, you are even an elder, a deacon, a pastor. You've never been baptized and people think you are. It's just may God convict you that you do the right thing and be baptized. I've heard of people who are going to baptize other people, going for missions to reach other people. When they are there, they realize themselves that they have not been baptized. And then they, they get baptized before they baptize other people. <laughs> Which is a good thing so that you know you are afraid of God more than people. What they'll say, what they'll do, what however they speak. And after some, sometimes they'll just forget. And some people will be encouraged because of your act to do the right thing as well. Yeah. So and then also, um, there are some baptism that happen that don't make sense and they're not in the bible i've heard of some denominations that they don't do uh, they don't use water in their baptism you're just told to go under some flag and then they tell you you've been baptized the problem with that is this because <clears throat> if the bible is the text through which we we pattern our lives then we have to do what the bible says it doesn't specifically say you should be baptized in a lot of water and be immersion it doesn't say that but by experience and by reading the history of Israelites, how the baptism used to happen, we know the baptism that is being spoken about in the Bible, people are being put into the water and then come out of the water, immersed basically. Yeah. So if you've not been immersed in water, I think it's the right thing to do. Just uh, look for a church and then be baptized. And it doesn't have to be a big ceremony. <laughs> uh, some people can make it a big ceremony for nothing. Like the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, he's been preached to by Philip. They get to even a couple of water somewhere, and then he says, "Why can't I be? There's water. Look, look, look!" He gets out of the chariot, uh, the, the carriage, and then he's baptized, and he goes off. There were no witnesses per se. They were just uh, the him and maybe the entourage that were, they were walking with. He was baptized and went his own way, on his way. So even for you, look for somebody, be baptized, and that will help uh, the cause of Christ. So that you, we are doing everything that fulfills God's righteousness, not trying to be afraid of human beings and what they'll say in that sense. So if you were bab- baptized that in that sense, just going under the flag, no water was involved, that is not biblical, sadly, and we have to tell you that that is the truth. Then also the, those baptisms we've heard of, you were baptized as a child, 
Ah, uh, that is interesting because if you were baptized when you didn't even know what salvation is or anything like that, just because your parents went through some class and also you were taken through some classes and then you were baptized, you are not even aware of yourself. You're not aware of anything. I think also for that, it should be a conscious decision that somebody makes. So if a child is as has understood everything about salvation and they are conscious about the fact of uh, what it means to be saved, they should be baptized. But if they are too young also, a baby, a toddler, two years, four years, maybe some for some, if they have not understood everything, please, if you are baptized that way, also just take some time and be baptized the correct way. And then there are those also who were baptized by the sprinkling of water. Somebody put uh, is it, then the sprinkle on your on your head. Again, that is not in the Bible. We don't see that kind of baptism. And if you have access to water, you will be looking for an excuse for that to happen. And that shows your attitude and motive in this situation. So, if you have access to water, a lot of water, just get somebody and let let them baptize you. A disciple of Christ, a mature Christian. Let them baptize you. It doesn't have to be by a pastor, by the way. That's another thing you have to tell people. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a pastor who baptizes you. Remember, we were talking about Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Was that spoken to pastors, no. bishops? No. It was to every believer. Yeah. So every believer should be involved in reaching the world for Christ. And if I preach to someone, actually, it should be my duty to lead them to to lead to lead them yes to that salvation prayer and everything and then to baptize them so and it should happen at that this will be controversial but it should happen at the point of somebody has accepted christ baptize them it doesn't have to be you know take them through some classes so that they understand this are they really saved we don't see that in the bible as well you see like the ethiopian eunuch he wasn't taken through some classes i think maybe they walk the journey went for a few kilometers and then he said, yeah, get in. So basically the thing is, if somebody has understood the, the gospel and they are willing to be baptized, we shouldn't stop, stop them from doing, going to that step as well. Uh, but some people will say, yeah, you know, you're baptizing people without them knowing what they're supposed to do, what salvation is. And I think then before they get saved, that's what should happen. They should be given enough information to make a decision for Christ. And that should be included in baptism, so that when they accept, they are baptized as well at that point. Yep, uh, anything else? Actually, mm-hmm. you've answered all the questions I had mm-hmm. noted down mm-hmm. through the verses and the explanations. Uh-huh. I had questions like mm-hmm. sprinkling of water, uh-huh. mm-hmm. or at what point should someone be baptized? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. and now through the verses and explanations, you've actually answered the okay. questions I had. 